All right, and welcome everyone to the Jeanette Biro podcast. I'm Jeanette Biro, and thank you so much as always for being here as we dive into the world of exploring consciousness. And today I have a wonderful guest who is a beautiful soul on this planet, not just for his own willingness to journey because he has journeyed deeply, but his willingness to journey to the light and be shining his light in the way that he is. Welcome to the show, Jeff Saunders, the Canadian healing medium. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm very excited uh, to share this opportunity with you today. Very grateful as we've aligned so many times doing different videos with one another. And mm -hmm. it's always so much joy uh, when you and I connect to be able to share. So thank you. Yeah, this is beautiful. So we've known each other for, um, I don't know, would you say at least five, eight, maybe That's, a decade almost? I don't know. I could be a, somewhere along there. Yeah, it's been quite a few years now. But definitely, yeah, yes, definitely. And so um, it's been really beautiful to watch your journey because you have just grown so much to the point that now you offer um, intuitive guidance to people. You offer healings to people. You've really just grown into your light. And, and I definitely want to talk about the things that you're offering now, but I really want to give people an understanding of where you've come from and how you've really journeyed through this, because you are somebody that I think can give so many people hope and faith that no matter where they're at, they can really transcend that and mm -hmm. find the light again, find themselves again. Mm -hmm. And um, you really are living proof of that. So what would you say um, was really your turning point that brought you to really wanting to question consciousness, like really wanting to know, is there something more? There's got to be something more. What was that for you? Well, and before I even share, I have to always bring up that everything is very trigger warning for people. So I'm very open and honest with what I share about and whatever comes to us today to share about, I just really want to like in every aspect of trigger warning, mm -hmm. I've lived through different things. So I just want to, you know, ease people into it. But I think you know, the, the, the transition for me after all the suffering years and years and years ago um, of everything that I went through back then, it was actually through my near-death experience, I would say, right? And mm -hmm. we share the, you know, our experiences with that. But it was actually, you know, it was my last time trying to take my life. And I have a dozen past suicide attempts in many different ways where it would be impossible for anyone to survive um, with, with the things that I have done. And the doctors didn't believe me because I didn't have any, uh, I didn't have any symptoms of the things that I went through where I shouldn't be here. But it, when we had talked before, you, you had said, you know, spirit said, there's nothing you can do. You can't end your life. Mm -hmm. You just have to uh, survive from that. So you know, it was 10 years ago, the last time or 12 years ago when I tried to end my life, but it was actually because of medications, the doctor switching me around on and being very sensitive. Um, it caused me to go into a deep place again uh, of suffering because it was, uh, I lost control of my emotions um, because they're, that's what they're, they're trying to block you from feeling. That's mm -hmm. what the medications are doing. So, uh, you know, I was successful with, with ending my life. Um, so, you know, just sharing on the depths of what we would call hell, the frequency of hell, what we live in and what the beings are living in on the other side. Because as soon as we, I lower myself to that deep depression, the energy around us is of hell too. So the beings are in hell, you're aligning with them and they're causing me to suffer and suffer and suffer even more. So, which ended up to me wanting to take my life. And I, you know, I did succeed where my body stopped breathing. And I gained a bunch of beautiful gifts from this and how I'm able to give back in my life today. And that's the understanding of the shifts of consciousness, the difference between our human mind's consciousness and our soul's consciousness. So when I was uh, in that deep state of suffering within my mind, uh, going over the suffering and the things I, I, you know, you start feeling I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I shouldn't be here. There's no purpose for me and going through all this and, and just really feeling that despair feeling of no hope and then wanting to free yourself from that state. Um, try to take my life. So I, I overdosed myself where my body stopped breathing. And when this happened for me, 
I, I, I then there was a shift of consciousness from my human mind uh, of the pain and suffering I was going through to then this complete stillness feeling of calm and peace. I was still thinking though, I was still alive. And I could, I could tell I was, I was uh, very aware my body wasn't breathing. And then it was this feeling like I was in a coffin and I could feel my body shifting around within my physical body. And right away, because I was back to the alignment of my inner being of light right away, I said, God, I don't want to die. And I said, but can you please show me the other side? So then this nice portal window opened up and I could see chandeliers and lights. Uh, you know, I was just staring at it and kind of peeking my head in around the corner, looking at everything, seeing the glossy, vivid colors. And it was so beautiful. And then I know I went to two other places, but I, it wasn't meant for me to remember. And then all of a sudden I could hear my mom calling me, Jeff, keep breathing, son, keep breathing. Like she was outside of my body, but no one was actually there. So it brought me back to my body and through spirit, I was dead. They told me I was dead for four minutes at that point before coming back to my body. And then I could feel the aliveness um, of a shock of my body to start breathing again. And then I woke up on my couch um, and oh, oh, that's your door. <laughs> I thought it was oh. mine, my cat coming in. I'm like, oh, you're not supposed to be in here. <laughs> so when I come back to my body, I was given a gift where I can see the beings around me. And I, I, it took me a few moments to, to realize I actually wasn't dead because I thought I was dead, but I felt like I was in my actual apartment. I felt like mm -hmm. everything was here. So I was awoken to the gift of sight to be able to see. And then since that um, growing in many different ways with the work I do with the higher evolved beings and, and continue to work with them, I have to be able to see them because that is my strength. It for them to answer me is a shift yes and no um, when I'm working with them. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, um, the beginning um, of me understanding the difference of consciousness and the different and, and what I could feel of the pureness of no suffering. It gave me an understanding of feeling it. Now, there was still a whole lot of work because it's been three and a half years I've done to be in full alignment of my inner being now. But that was the awakening moment for me to understand the difference between my human mind's consciousness and the pureness of the light that lives within each of us. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And what a profound moment. Um, and I really like how you said that for you, seeing them, having sight for spirit is really significant for the workings of your gifts because it, yes. that's what resonates as your truth. And, and I like that you're saying that because it is so important that everybody know that for some people, sight is a big piece. Like for me, it is as well, but for others, it's like direct knowings yes. others. They hear it. They hear it. They see nothing, but they hear it, right? Like there is no one right way of yes. how it is, but it's really your way. Yes. Right. And, and I love how you have aligned with your method because I think that's what we all need to do is, you know, try a whole bunch of different things to create our own method yes. of how and we do it. And here's the beautiful thing that where we're at today in this world, in this moment right now is technology and sharing and being open and honest with one another because the world has turned sensitive, which mm -hmm. for me is a good thing because now we can open up and share without judgment, even though mm -hmm. it, it, there still will be behind the scenes but it's not in the forefront in front of us where we can really start learning and growing from one another, learning and growing what our gifts can be and then sharing and then hearing from other people, because that is how I got here today was mm -hmm. from listening from others, learning how they grew. Sometimes it didn't align to me and that's totally okay. Mm -hmm. But the pieces that do align to us, when you listen to another, it can help you grow so much faster. Yeah. Uh, right. In life. Absolutely. That's beautiful. So you've taken your gift of like intuitive sense, mediumistic abilities, and you've channeled a lot of that into healing. How did the, how did the healing portion come around for you? Uh, the healing portion for me, it came after it, well, I started my, I started with, it came over 25 years of many different pivotal points in my life of, of different forms of awakenings for what they meant for my life. And I started at the age of 17 with outside help. Um, 
and stuck with that of reaching out for outside help anytime I needed it during my life. And I needed it for 25 years off and on. Mm -hmm. um, I was never afraid to ask for help because that is why I'm where I'm at today. I wasn't afraid to see it as a weakness because, uh, you know, without any form of judgment to this for another, but a pure weakness is really when we're afraid to ask for help. That is where like a weakness would come in because it's holding you back mm -hmm. because we only know what we know with the tools and knowledge we have of only through personal experiences that we have lived through. Mm -hmm. So when you reach out for help, you're learning from another who has grown and evolved. You're gaining new tools and knowledge on your path, right? To become mm -hmm. stronger. So, you know, it was reaching out for outside help. Um, and then the, the different experiences with my near-death experience going through that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was, I totally was. Well, No, that's okay. So basically like, so those are what brought you to that. How did you discover um, your healing modalities? And maybe before even that, what would you, how would you explain your healing modalities that you offer for people? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, well, these were all the pivotal points in my life that I had to heal from. And I put it together in a two hour session. Hmm. So the biggest transformation for me to really align me to presence in my moment, living in the moment now, living to the alignment of our source of energy of, of, of the light that we have split and come to live into this form, we can align back to that source of energy, whatever name a person wants to get, call it, it's mm -hmm. completely fine. Um, but it was aligning and learning it through suffering everything to where I'm at today, I had to suffer in deep ways. And it was through a relationship that ended over just over two years ago. And, and I actually just wrote an article on it, or I shared an article on it. It was going through deep and severe suffering of a loss that I had a hard time trying to comprehend of, of feeling like this heaven when I seen her, when I looked at her, I felt that energy of heaven. So when I lost that connection to her, it was complete hell for me again, and I had to work on it. So the beings uh, of the high council came in and they did two, they, they taught me two um, major things that are holding people back in, in our lives. And, the, and it was through dream state. Every night when I go to sleep, I remember what I'm doing on the other side. And when I wake up, I remember everything because it's helping me to do my work that I'm doing today. So that's the big part of it. Mm -hmm. But it's releasing bad karma from this life and past lives. It's forgiving ourselves for the mistakes we have made in this life and past lives. Mm -hmm. And they brought me to a past life of mine. And I, and I had to forgive myself. I didn't forgive myself for from um, an experience that I lived through. So as I'm watching and witnessing myself, it was, it was somewhere years ago, um, obviously in a different life. Mm -hmm. And it was nighttime and I was in a car and I did something that I shouldn't have done. So because I did not heal from that experience fully, I brought it into this life with me and it caused me to self-sabotage. So times in our lives when um, we feel like, well, geez, you know, I keep going ahead five steps and then I go back two or three more and I mm -hmm. keep going back. And sometimes I go back 10 steps and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. It's because of the karma and the exchange of energy that's a part of you working with your subconscious is pulling you back and it causes us to self-sabotage in our life. Mm -hmm. So as soon as they got me to repeat a few phrases that I do in my session, I, and I just repeat everything of the experience I went through, I just get others to go through the same thing in a meditative state in their own home. Mm -hmm. And I get them to repeat those phrases and it releases layers of energy and it transmutes back into light because I, I've learned to master the pillar of light and I amplify it through their body. So the light is vibrating and it removes those layers to bring them to raise up in frequency to, mm -hmm. to not have those issues. So that's one of the major things. Um, and then with the suicide uh, attempts, all the times when I try to commit suicide throughout life, it's because when, when we go, when I, when I was a child, I went through, I had a lot of suffering, suffering at school, being made to feel I was different every year by the teachers, being bullied every year, verbally, emotionally abused at home from a father um, who, who had not had the healing work um, from his past and same for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, he was not emotionally available. So as a child suffering all those years and fear at home and feeling abuse, I lived in hell. I, we literally, literally 
live in hell. There's beings of hell that are around us at that state. Mm -hmm. So that's where I had attachments. So I literally all throughout my life, when I suffered in deep ways, we lower ourselves and we get attachments. So a piece of that light of different beings will be attached to you. So I had 50 beings that were attached to me all of my life. Every time I suffered or going through suffering, their energy was a part of me and it would lower my frequency even more. And it would cause me and struggle to get myself out of it because it was causing me to really hold me down. Mm -hmm. It taught me how to heal all the beings all the time that are attached, that were attached to me. So instantly when I woke up the next morning, I never self-sabotaged again, instantly for two, over two, almost two years now, I've never suffered with depression ever again, when I've suffered my whole life with depression, because I healed all the beings that were attached to me. So I don't have those anymore. Mm -hmm. And then the biggest thing um, during my session as well is you have to tell another all the personal experiences you went through that caused you hurt and pain in life. You have to share with another of, um, of all the shame and guilt of actions you have done to another or to yourself that you keep secret or not, you have to voice it out loud to another. You have mm-hmm. to, to get it out, right? Like get it out, out of your being. You get it out of your being, but the beautiful thing with my session is I'm running the frequency so high through your body. While I keep people in a state of presence, the vibration of the power of the light will vibrate and transmute every experience they voice out. And I tell them, if you're going to come into my session, you have to be vulnerable, vulnerable. Vulnerability is the key to our freedom. When you, mm-hmm. if you hold things in, you're not going to be freed. So as long as we go through, it's very guided. There's unconditional love, obviously, throughout my mm-hmm. session. There is no judgment in my session. And what happens is that vibration of layers of light are removed, 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 removed. And as we keep going up, we keep going up higher in frequency, the more love, joy and happiness we feel in our mm-hmm. life. So as, as they go through that, um, and, and then there's two more. And, you know, when I was going through deep suffering, trying to figure out how to go uh, to move on from my ex, you know, it caused me to go through all these experiences in the last three years, actually, mm-hmm. um, was seeing a shaman. And when I seen the shaman, he did uh, an abandonment, bringing me back to my, uh, inner child or younger years and healing of an abandonment issue or something that would have lined aligned to that. So going through that experience, it really made another shift. But what I do in my session is I bring you back to the earliest point of your life, meeting your inner child. I get them to go through the experience of it Mm -hmm. and then bypassing every experience in life and bringing them to today's date. And then they feel and go through an experience to, to uh, um, apply the pureness of your light to your body, moving forward to feel that abundance of self-worth, self-love, no more judgment towards yourself. You know, there's no fears you have this, um, you gain that when you go through that after going through that process and then healing your heart space, Milan Mortz. If you've heard of Milan Mortz, she is a very beautiful soul who transmutes uh, vocals and tones through the other side. I did a few experiences uh, through her meditations, and they were so powerful. And uh, one of them was very powerful, and that was healing your heart space and going through your whole life and removing all the hurt and pain, flushing it from you. So mm-hmm. I took that and added it into my session. So those yeah. were the main pivotal points to now having the full alignment of feeling that abundance of love, joy, and happiness to look in the mirror in my life today and love what I see in the reflection. Mm -hmm. It's not liking it. Oh, I like myself here, there. You've evolved to love. I Mm -hmm. love myself, Mm -hmm. right? And and, and it's not just saying it, but you feel it. And Mm -hmm. that's the main thing. That's the most important thing is feeling it for yourself. That's so uh, lovely. And so aligned, I find too, with where the world is wanting to go. So I know the world is in so much strife right now. We all know that we can see it in many levels, many ways, many countries, all of that. But I know from the spirit world, uh, what I get from my guides is echoing a lot of what you're saying is we are really in this uh, generation or a lifetime that is here to transmute these patterns from ancestors all the way down to now. And one of those big things is going back to that inner child and releasing the burdens and then going back to those past lives and releasing the burdens now, because 
as much as there is past, present, and future, there is also only simply now. And yeah. now can transmute yeah. past, present, and future. Yeah. Right? So the work that's happening now with people who are understanding these ideas of higher consciousness and healing and healing like you're doing, like you're really doing a lot in helping to shift humanity's paradigm. Yes. Which well, I think is great. Yeah, it's so, because it's so important. Mm -hmm. We need to be realigned. And you said something that stood out to me right away. And it's something that I say is breaking cycles, breaking mm -hmm. the cycles of all the past generations that are that have not healed. They did not have the opportunity to heal. They just didn't have it. When I do my healing sessions, releasing resentment and, and anger and hate for your past is a must. It has to mm -hmm. happen. But there's core truths that will come out from me when I am guiding and doing my healing sessions on mm -hmm. why these things happen. When you're angry, uh, there's a lot of molestation that goes on um, in families and outside of families when we're children and we block it. Mm -hmm. I blocked being molested at the age of four. And that vibration of that energy played into my life moving forward unknowingly. And it's cycles of, of all these things of abuse that are being done, releasing it, not being angry at the person who did it at you or who did it, but it's because it happened to them. Mm. Either they were not healed, that energy shaped and formed them to act out where they didn't feel control because that energy is a part of them and it is too powerful unless you've been healed. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, it's giving unconditional love for those who harmed us because they are very beautiful beings that came into this planet. They went through experiences that they were not healed from. And because they were not healed, that is the only reason why they did the actions to another. So when I do in my sessions, I have unconditional love for everyone. You, it doesn't matter what you mm -hmm. did. I will heal you from it because I know it's either from blocked information that you blocked as a child to not remember. And it comes up in the session. It will mm -hmm. come up um, and we heal it. Mm -hmm. and we heal this, right? Yeah. Um, but and I yeah. love when you say we, because you're really talking about like you as a conduit for this higher like consciousness, like you I, being your part of uh higher consciousness higher realms higher god consciousness whatever the word is right yeah. for people yeah mm -hmm. because all i'm doing um all i'm doing is sharing my personal experiences and then with the connection and alignment to my to to god's consciousness um to my higher self that connects down to me during my session I have, when we have that alignment to our higher self of God consciousness, we're then fully guided. So when I'm doing my sessions, I am in full connection with my source of energy that is streaming through me of where I come from. And then, it, and then it streams out and, you know, there's going to be a major transition in the world. Um, as we move forward with the, with consciousness and understanding, because we're not trying to change anyone's belief system. You're perfect for who you are. Mm -hmm. What you believe is why you're here to go through these experiences. Mm -hmm. But as a human race, and even when I was speaking with them yesterday, this world will be destroyed and it will not be here for us to, to have a gift to live through the experience unless these changes start happening to mm -hmm. consciousness. So we will have to break away from the old beliefs and old systems that were put in place because we need to rise the vibration and frequency within this planet um, to to still have it here for us to have our experiences um, mm -hmm. in this dimension. Yeah, I agree. You know, and I really think that's what we're seeing right now too, is a lot of the fracturing of old systems that yes. uh, are those, say, patriarchal systems that don't support humanity growing and evolving right now. We're seeing that really being shaken up and, yeah. and shattered in some cases. In some cases, there's a big resistance, but I think it is all for that shifting and changing that, you know, the universe is really trying to co-conspire with humanity to make happen. Yeah. It's uncomfortable for a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. got to be uncomfortable. Um, especially when you're not into your knowing yet mm -hmm. of, who you, of who you truly are. And again, there's no judgment for people with that because you're mm -hmm. perfect for where you are. I was in a place before I was evolved to my knowing, mm -hmm. you know, I was living the human experience and going through a lot of stuff. Right. But then when we come and you have your own personal experiences, it will shift you into your knowing, right? Mm -hmm. And it, uh, that's my, been my experience. It's just, there's a beautiful shift of awakenings. Yeah. Um, being told to believe things from before 
but it didn't feel right. It didn't resonate, but I was told to believe it. And then you have your own personal experiences where no one can tell you the difference and it shifts you into your higher self um, on my path, uh, you know, with myself. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. So let's, uh, okay. So in terms of your offerings for this course that you're talking about, um, people can find you on your website. Is that where they can sign up for it? Yeah. The Canadian healing medium. Yeah. Com. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and they can find that on there. So I, I encourage you guys to check that out. Definitely, if you're watching this and this really feels like a pull for you, um, it's worth trying. Because like we said, there's so many paths to wellness. There is not one way. There are many ways. And um, this might just be your way that fits, right? Yeah. So it's definitely worthwhile. Um, now, before we go, I would love to know what are some of your feels for humanity what's some of your intuitive insights about what you think is coming down the pipe for humanity here do you get any hits at all if any uh just uh, it's the growth of being more compassionate and not judgment mm -hmm. and shifting away from that mm -hmm. getting out of your ego believing you know more than you know um, and always needing to be right, you know, because when we look at other people in life, we just not, I shouldn't say we, I used to, I don't anymore, but people judge other people. And it's getting, it's starting to shift away from judgment because, you know, they're here for their own purpose. They're here for their own lessons and learning. Mm -hmm. And when we stop being judgmental, looking at other people, there is so much value to it because they have lived a life path that you or I haven't lived. Mm -hmm. And when you listen to their story and, and more so of what they have learned through being uh, their truth, there's just so much value for each of us mm -hmm. when we're compassionate towards other people on their path, thinking yeah. that we know more than we know about them, but we really don't. Right. It's stopping and listening to the other person and, and getting mm -hmm. yourself out, being present in the moment with the aliveness of your inner being, right? Mm -hmm. Out in your mind of, of thinking and, and judging. Yeah, I love that. I, I agree. I really think we are uh, really needing to dive into compassion because nothing's going to change if it's still like opposing polarities until we can meet in a compassionate middle ground and yeah. save space for one side and then space for the other to be fully heard. Yeah. then come together in compassionate uh, communication to then choose where to mend or how to mend. Yeah. Right? Have... Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just, yeah, I think like getting comfortable with vulnerability, yeah. getting comfortable with our own vulnerability, but also holding space for others vulnerability, yes. right? With a compassionate heart gives us those foundations for change. Yeah. Because one of the biggest things in my life today as well, when I'm connecting with people or talking with them, um, you can't win against ego. You can't win and put your energy in talking to someone. They're already thinking what they're going to say next. They're not even listening, being present with you in the moment mm -hmm. because they want to be right. Mm -hmm. When you have, when you have people like this that come in, into life, uh, onto your path. Um, and again, there's no judgment of, of it being, you know, they're just learning and growing as well. Um, it's learning boundaries of energy has been huge for me in the last year to really understand boundaries of energy, because if you're a giver and, and you love to give, how many times have we lost ourselves in life? Mm -hmm. Because we think we need to give more. Why are they not loving me? Why am I not getting it back? They're mm -hmm. not in a space to. So yeah. it's really watching. I'm so observant being present in the moment. Now, I don't even honestly, time does not really exist. And I have a hard time when people are trying to ask me like how many years, because I'm yeah. so <laughs> in the moment that time, right? <laughs> it's yeah. like, how many? I don't know. Yeah. So it's learning. It's, it's really observing and being aware of our own energy, listening to how we feel. Because if we're starting to lose ourselves, that is the time where I cut myself off. And I, but I send unconditional love and not hate towards someone. Mm -hmm. And I remove them. I remove them. And it's how I live in a very beautiful place today is they're just not in a space where they are and I are aligned. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't allow people into my space that are going to try to lower the frequency of, of feeling um, this love, joy, and happiness that we can feel mm -hmm. um, because it will drain me. And, and I, we are no good 
to the world or to anyone else if our cup is not overflowing and full. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I love that. This has just been uh, beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me on the show and sharing your insights, your journey. I mean, we just touched the surface of your journey. There's so much more people can learn from you. And I really do encourage people to check out your website. Uh, I'll have the links below as well as links to your Facebook and Instagram. Um, but tra- yeah. That actual, the, the transformational session that I have, the two hour session is really taking off. And I have people globally now reaching out for this two hour session Beautiful. because what I am here to do in my life today is to restore beings back to the pureness of their light. And for those who are ready to be vulnerable, to really want to feel the aliveness of who they are, to free themselves from all the experiences of the past, this is what my transformation is for. Mm -hmm. It will help. It will realign you and instantly give you transformation um, to feel the calmness in you and to feel the worthiness, to feel purpose in your life. And Mm -hmm. if people want to check my YouTube channel, the Canadian Healing Medium, um, I have tons of reviews on there. I have tons of reviews on my main page Mm -hmm. um, from people leaving, uh, uh, not messages, what do you call it? Reviews. Um, From the instant transformation, just from two hours of my time to Mm -hmm. work with me. Um, And I'm just very honored. And even now I feel very emotional uh, because I feel the full alignment of my purpose. And to free people to love who they are and to start thriving in their life that's why I'm here now. Mm-hmm. That's why I didn't die after all those times, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're living uh, in line. You're living in purpose. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. So thank you again for being an inspiration. And uh, I'm sure I'll have you back on the show because I know we've got lots more we can talk about. Um, but yeah, now for everybody else watching, do definitely check out Jeff's website, The Canadian Healing Medium. And as well, for anything else, check out avalonspirit.com. We've got lots of offerings there as well for insights and just lots of good stuff. So I'll leave you guys with that this week, and I'll be back again next week with more. Thank you.